Hi, welcome to the third video on the craziest project I worked on here at Monday.com and probably ever, the robotic Japanese styled rat show. Today we're gonna to talk about how I built the special effects. How do we get smoke, electric curtains, sound, LED background, spotlights, a laser machine, and how it all works together. So let's jump right in. Where's the button? Okay, one expensive curtain. Excelente! Hello! Lifting one curtain was relatively easy, but lifting three curtains all leveled together and in sync was a challenge. The first problem I ran into was the fact that strings from the different curtains would kind of tangle with one another and then the curtains would not uh, come up level or go down level. At first I realized that the stepper motor that I was using for one curtain didn't have enough power for the three curtains. So I had to switch from my NEMA 17 stepper motor to a NEMA 23 stepper motor. Then I found out that the driver I was using for my stepper motor was overheating because it probably couldn't handle the bigger stepper motor. So I had to trade that up for a much bigger stepper motor driver. In order to overcome the problem with the strings tangling with one another, I tried a bunch of different designs of adapters that will sit on the stepper motor and hopefully separate the strings one from the other. After several miserable attempts, I finally came up with this model, which has this nifty little feature which lets you adjust each string length to get to the perfect leveling balance that you need for each curtain. In order to mount the servo motor onto the pagoda, I cut out this cute little mount out of wood and acrylic with a laser cutter. So once I got the curtains to work with the motor and the adapter and all that, the next step was to figure out how do I know when the curtains are fully open so I don't keep running the motor and causing damage to the curtains. So for this, I figured we could use a reed switch. A reed switch is a switch that is operated when a magnet comes nearby. Beeping means that there's a closed circuit. Okay, you get the picture. <laughs> so I cut out a little slot in the wood here, so the reed switch will reach five millimeters from the edge of the wood. And there you have it. Let the show begin. So our show, of course, needs a fog machine. So I got a fog machine, the smallest one I could find because it's a really small stage. So I got this 500 watt uh, fog machine. Uh, I got two types of liquid. One liquid is based on CO2, which evaporates quickly. And the other one is like the regular stuff, which is much cheaper uh, that stays around for longer. I wanted to try both liquids. So we have our fog machine here. Uh, it comes with this remote. You just press the button and the fog comes out and these LEDs turn on, uh, which is fine, but I want to somehow connect this uh, mechanism to the ESP32 to control when the fog comes out. So we're gonna have to hack it. So let's see how we're gonna do this. Cool. So here we have the receiver. You can see there's a pretty simple circuit. We have a relay, which probably is what's uh, letting the power through to make the fog come out. And uh, we have a bunch of uh, capacitors and re resistors. And we have a pretty standard RF receiver, 433 or 315 megahertz, doesn't really matter. This receiver works like any other receiver. I see that it has uh, three pins. Uh, one is labeled ground, another one is 12 volts, and the third one is output. So that's probably the data output. We're gonna take a multimeter to see what value the data output has by default, and then we're gonna give it the other data value, which means that it now received a command to 
gonna give us some fog. So I'm gonna connect the out and the ground together. And we're reading, well, under a vault and it keeps dropping. So that means the out is probably uh, on a default high. If I connect the 12 volts and the out, we have zero volts, meaning that there's no difference between the out and the 12 volts. This is a uh, pulled up, which is pretty standard. In order to activate the smoke machine, we simply have to connect the ground and the out pin. Yes, that worked. So all we have to do essentially is connect these two wires, put them on a, a relay and connect that to the controller. And then the ESP32 will send out a command to close uh, uh, the relay and that will then close the circuit and then we'll have the smoke come out. So we've got the smoke machine and we want it to smoke up the stage occasionally, you know, in dramatic moments. Then the question is, how do we get the smoke to go from here onto the stage? Apparently it's not as trivial as I thought it would be. So it appears that the smoke machine has these holes here and it needs the holes to suck in some air in order to create the smoke. So after trying all kinds of different tubes, I eventually found this. And this seemed pretty good, but then I had to find a way how to connect it to here. So I uh, cut out uh, with a laser cutter, this uh, adapter, where which, <laughs> which lets uh, some air come in from the bottom. And this is where the smoke comes out from. And I put some magnets on it, so it'll just attach to the smoke machine. I made another adapter, which will connect to the other end of the tube uh, and then connect on the bottom of the stage. Thank you, laser cutter, for making life so easy. All right, let's give it a try. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna make a part that's gonna help the smoke distribute kind of in a cool way on the rats from, from the back of the stage. I cut out this shape that I liked uh, in the laser cutter and I'm gonna use this as a template for the shape of the final uh, version. In you go. Ooh, romantic. Now we're gonna test the smoke. For that, I have this remote control, which operates the smoke machine. Oh, it's not connected. It is, it is connected. Oh yeah, boom. So we wanted to start the show with the curtains closed, spotlights on the rats, so you can see their silhouettes on the curtains and you can hear those divas preparing before the show begins. For this, I needed to build two spotlights. After testing several LEDs, I decided to go with a LED light that is meant to light up a room and take it apart. The light has a little driver that reduces the voltage from AC to DC uh, and the LED itself. Since these guys tend to heat, uh, I'm gonna keep the LEDs on for short durations every time and make sure that there is place for the heat to vent so we don't burn any wood. I already burned down the lab once, so you don't need that happening again.
I got this laser machine online. I'm thinking to put it on the pagoda from the ceiling and aim it down towards the rats so you'll see the laser effect through the smoke. Sound reactive, so it's supposed to change its effects based on the sound. And I figured that we'll run its power through a relay that's connected to the microcontroller so that we could trigger it on and off whenever we want during the show. Alright! So we have a pagoda. We have a background. We want the background to light up and be cool and the LEDs to be kind of sound responsive. So for this, I put together a LED matrix, a simple screen, 22 by 13 pixels, made out of strips of LEDs all connected together serially. In order to create the cool effects and in order to not spend too much time coding and working on effects, I found a cool component called Pixel Blaze, which essentially takes sound and translates it into all kinds of LED themes, which you can choose and even code if you'd like. It has a bunch of cool themes out of the box, and I connected an extra wire to the Pixel Blaze from the microcontroller in order to change themes when I want to. In order to get good diffusion so you don't actually see every pixel, I left about one inch, two and a half centimeters between the LED and the acrylic background. So I have a nice kind of glow on the acrylic. We did a collab with Pierre, the talented illustrator that works here at Monday.com. We asked him to pimp out the background of the pagoda. He ended up making this crazy samurai cat, which we think is totally awesome. So we have this controller, which I showed you how I built in the first video of this project. And I added some features to it so we can have special effects as well. What I showed you before is that the controller can control each rat separately, control the pan, tilt, the hands, and the motion of the head. But then I added another feature where I could toggle on the special effects mode. So now we can control the spotlight, the laser, the smoke machine, and choose the LED effect on the background. The way this works is the controller here sends signals to another microcontroller in the back of the stage that's connected to a bunch of relays, which turn on and off according to what we press here. We have a second microcontroller in the back hooked up to one of these. This is a sound module that I like to use in almost all of my projects that use sound. You simply throw in a micro SD card with a bunch of music you want to play, and then you can easily control which song to play and when to stop. So now I'm going to add a button that will let people listen to just one song when they pass by and they want to show off the pagoda to somebody. Okay, so the pagoda is almost ready. There's a little bit more fine tuning to do, but we have our special effects now and we are almost ready for the show. So let's get a taste of the show by pressing this button. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. See you next time.